So they singing, they happy. Uh, so I don't want to mess up the whole shop. I'll be coming up, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First and foremost, we thank the creator of heaven and earth, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And blessed be his holy name. And in the tongue of our forefathers, I say to all of y'all, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, we're here on a blessed day, the holy Shabbat, you know. It's been a beautiful day. I mean, I haven't had bad, too many bad Shabbos. But you know, today, you know, with a few brothers, we went out. And you know, it's always a blessing. I mean, every week here, we see the, the growth of our, our nation. When our yellow dean, when the children come up and read so eloquent, eloquently in the Hebrew and all that. But then again, like I said, when I went to North Carolina that time, when the children did their reading. And this time, we just went to a youth Shabbat and when you see the children and, and they conducting this whole thing and, and you watching and you listening to them and you like, wow, this guy's just like his pops. You know, this guy is just like such as, you know, you can see that they've grasped this and they, 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 they got the seriousness of this thing right now because this is serious times. And you know, it's bad if you can see Israel falling off and, you know, and, and leaving law and, and, and you know, the kids leaving their parents, husbands and wives leaving each other. You know, this is, this is a trying time when we need each other. But there is an adversary out there that, you know, will throw little monkey wrenches in there to us. So we have to try to overcome that. So when we see things like that, it just strengthens us to let us know that we still got a chance. We still going good. Oh, man. Again, blessed be the most high. Amen. You know, beautiful day. Had a nice week. You know, how was y'all week? Everybody, uh, different oh. weeks. Uh, y'all made it through. That's the important part. You know, some of ours was rougher than others. But, um, again, we're going to carry on in, um, in our history. And we're going to go into 2 Samuel, um, chapter 21. And we're going to um, continue reading about our forefather, Dawi. You know, I mean, he's just coming out of situations with his sons. You know, you never know where the adversary or the enemy is going to come from. So he's yeah. just coming out of, you know, fighting with his son or not him fighting, but his son trying to take over. And um, he's, you know, he, he his heart was still with his son. You know, Joab had to toughen him up, man. Toughen up, man. You know, Joab told him, he said, listen, man. He said, if all of them would have died and your son would have been alive, it would have been a feast. But now it looks like a morning here. So sometimes we need this, you know, we need that in our lives. We need people there that can say, listen, you're going about this all wrong. You know, and we have to know how to take good counsel. So as we go on, we're going to see more of that. But um, we're going to go to chapter 21. Come see. We're in the second book of Shemuel, which is Samuel, chapter 21, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there was a famine in the days of Dawi three years, year after year. And Dawi sought the face of Yehoah, and Yehoah said, It is for Shaul and for his bloody house, because he put to death the Gibeonites. All right. First of all, in our lives, we're going to go through situations. It's going to be ups and it's going to be down. Nobody's always up here. In life, you're going to have ups and downs, but... Sometimes we feel like, okay, we can just get through this. This is just one of them things that happen, you know. I, you know, if I just tweak this and do that. But then when things go on too long or, or the fights, you know, with, with those who you love go on too long, sometimes right. you got to go to God. Right. Amen. You got to go to God. You got to pray to God and say, Father, you know, what's, what's going on here? You know, show me my wrong. Because you can always see everybody else is wrong. Amen. But you got to go to God and say, show, show me my wrong or, or, or give me a sign of the situation. So that's what that we did because, you know, it was, a, it was a famine. We've been through famines, you know, but he, he pretty much had probably in the castle, you, had, you was eating good. But as you went through, you said, okay, you know, right now, things years, you're like, hold up, man. It's just something going on here. There's a reason for this famine. So he went to the most high to inquire as he did so often. Come she. Two. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnants of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Shaul sought to slay them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Yehuda. And Dawid said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? 
and wherewith shall I make atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of Yehoah? And the Gibeonites said unto him, It is no matter of silver or gold between us and Shaul or his house, neither is it for us to put any man to death in Yisrael. And he said, What say ye that I should do for you? And they said unto the king, the man that consumed us and devised against us so that we have been destroyed for remaining in the borders of Israel. let seven of his sons be delivered unto us and we will hang them unto Yehoah in, in Gibeah of Shaul the chosen of Yehoah and the king said I will deliver them alright now and again from the, from the, he said he inquired of the Most High so the Most High told him he says, um, he said, and, the, and Yehoah answered, it is Shaul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. Okay, so the Most High gave him that answer. Because everything that happens to you ain't for your, for your reasons. Or everything that's going down, sometimes you got to say, listen, this ain't for me. But you, 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 you might see something going on in the congregation. You might see something going on in your house. Or you may see something and you let that go by. And the Most High is telling me, he said, this is for Shaul, what he did to the Gibeonites. So then David had to approach that. So he went to the Gibeonites, probably to the, to the heads of them, and said, yo, what's going on? And what, I, what can I do to appease this? Sometimes you take on other people's burdens. Amen. You know what I mean? You, you come into a position on the job, and they done made you the vice president of the corporation, the CEO, but, but y'all in, in the black or in the red or uh, in, the red. in the red. In the red. In the red. And everybody looking at you like, what we going to do? You've been there 24 hours. You've been, you been there you know, a, a couple of weeks. But everybody looking at you like, yo, how you going to get us out of this? You know? We don't want layoffs. We don't want this. So, you know, now he's going to them and he said, yo, okay, how can I make this right? Something that he did, you know? So then they told him, it's, it said, because Shaul killed off the, all the Gibeonites in his zeal. Well, not all, but a lot of Gibeonites in his zeal. But also, we have to live up to our word. Amen. Like back in when I was young, I told y'all before, I used to, I dibble dabble with the five percenters. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I used to hang out in the projects, I used to hang with the five percenters. And one of the major things they said is, My word is my bond. Word is bond. Well, come out of your mouth, you're bonded by that. And we'll come out of Israel, as we say it enough times, that if you swear something or if you make promises, you got to make good on that. So we can't just say things lightly. And in, in the course of, of, of days before, Joshua, he made a, a, a pact with, with the Gibeonites. Amen. He made a pact with them because they, they fooled him. You know, they, right. they, was, they was his neighbors right there. But they fooled him, put on old clothes, dirty clothes, just a, a spent bottle of water and came walking in there like, like they came from a far country. So he's like, yo, what can I do for you? <laughs> you know? So he said, well, just don't, don't make a lead that you won't kill us. Smart. You know, and Joshua thinking they from far off. He's like, okay, I make a lead with y'all that I won't kill off your people. So then later on, though, he found out that, oh, they was right there. And we supposed to be killing off everything right there. But now that you done made this pact, you can't go against that. So now you got to go with a second thing. Okay, I'm a, I can't kill y'all. But I'm going to slave y'all. Y'all going to be hewers of wood and, and drawers of water. I'm going to make y'all work. But I can't kill y'all. And surely this thing is written. This, you know, this thing was, was written down so that throughout the lines, you got to say, oh, you be a nice man. We can't slay them. So we have to keep the word and, and, and the oaths that our forefathers made. If I make a pact with somebody, my son have to keep that oath. And I have to make sure he know of that, though. I have to pass it down. Look, son, I made a, a pack with Brother Johanna's son. Look, don't do him no dirty. Don't do his family no dirty. And my son has to honor that. But now, David got to make right on Shaul's wrong. Come see. Seven. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jehonatan, the son of Shaul, because of Jehovah's oath that was between them, between Dawid and Jehonatan, the son of Shaul. Again, an oath was made. And David had to honor that oath. Him and John, John, Jonathan was like brothers. They was, they was, they was closer, closer than brothers. 
They said the love that they had for each other surpassed that of a woman. That means they 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 knew what each other was doing. They knew that you would never do me wrong. You would never do me dirty. So that oath he made with Jonathan, yo, I'll take care of your family, you know. Even Jonathan asked him. He said, Listen, man, he said, I know you're gonna have this. He said, I know I'm not gonna be the king after my album. Cause you know, I know you've been giving giving this. So, you know, take care of my family. And he said, I'll do that. So then he said, for that, I can't give up. What's the name? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely he, he, he still, he stays with me, but he still got to make good on the promise. So he said he going to give up seven other ones. Come shit. Eight. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bore unto Shaul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Shaul, whom she bore to Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Meholotite. Okay, and so I know the big question mark is up here now. The big, the big hold up is there. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know y'all wanted to tell him to stop reading before I told him to stop reading. He said, did I just hear that Michal had five sons? When it said that when David put her away and she had no children until the day of her death, see y'all thought y'all see a contra contradiction in there. Huh? So, but I can, yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, you might you might have to go on the Maury show for this bit. But uh, but some I, I can't answer it all the way. But some some writers say that the name Mikhail was supposed to be substituted for. Mira, that was her sister right. that had the children, and they said that Mira died early, and Mikhail took on took over the children. Right. So that's why they put it as the five sons of Mikhail. Amen. Then I read one place where it said Mikhail had another husband, so <laughs> <laughs> David David didn't count them as his kids. So that's why they put the no kids until. Right. Y'all handle that because I don't want to, you know, go between the lines. Nah. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hanged them in the mountain before Yehoah. And they fell all seven together. And they were put to death in the days of the harvest, in the first days, at the beginning of the barley harvest. And reached by the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon a rock from the beginning of the harvest until water was poured upon them from heaven. And she suffered neither the birds nor the nor the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beast of the field by night. And it was told that we what rich by the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Shaul, had done. All right, because um, this was a thing that wasn't done too much. You know, Rizpa being the mother of two of them. She's seen what happened with these seven, and she, um, they said she took a sackcloth and spread it on a rock, and she's watching this thing, and she's watching them hang, and they said from the, from the first days in the beginning of the barley harvest, so that's around April, right. around the Pesach time, and he said in the wrist part, the daughter of Ohio took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock, and from the beginning of the harvest until the water dropped upon, the, upon them from heaven. Some people say this was about five months that she just sat there, because from that April, they say the waters usually come down around October, they said she stayed there for a long time. And they said it was told to David what she did. Come she. 12. And David went and took the bones of Shaul and the bones of Yehonatan his son from the men of Jabesh Gilad who had stolen them from the board place of Beit Sha'an where the Philistines had hanged them in the day that the Philistines slew Shaul and Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Shaul and the bones of Yehonatan his son. And they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And they buried the bones of Shaul and Yehonatan his son in the country of Binyamin and Zela, in the sepulchre of Kish his father. And they performed all that the kings commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. All right, again, you know, Dabi, Dabi did all of this for somebody who's trying to kill him. Amen. Shaul wanted Dawi's life. He was after them trying to kill him day and night. He couldn't sleep because Dawi was still alive, but. And, and his God fearingness and his, his 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 zeal, he he said, "Listen, this Philistine's got the the the, um, 
the bones of, of a king over there. He said, let's get this, let's get all of these bones, and let's bury them in a, in a, in a, a right place. And it says, and after that, God was entreated for the land. So therefore, that means, he, you know, he did something good. Because Amen. once you entreat the Most High, that means you're on the right track. Come she. 15. And the Philistines had war again with Yisrael. And Dawid went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And Dawid waxed fame. And Ish ben who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear was 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being girded with new armor, thought to have slain Dawi. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him Hallelujah. and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of Dawid swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt no more go out with us to battle that thou quench not the lamp of Yisrael. All right, again, we out there fighting the Philistines. We fighting these giants. So now, Dawid is out there doing what he do, but at some point, you know, you're killing them off, and they say at this point, he's probably about 60 years old. So at some point, he got faint. You know, you're fighting for a long time. Your win ain't like it used to be. Right. I mean, a lot of us don't like to want to say it, but <laughs> you get a little older. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't what you used to be. Yeah, right. You know, you can do the, the just for men and all of that, but you ain't what you used to be. So now we out there doing his thing, but he ran out of energy. You know, and, and the dude, you know, was going to come up and, and hit him up. But Abishai, seeing this happen, you know, see it die we faint because we gotta look out for each other. Right. You know, we out there fighting, but I gotta be watching your back and you watching my back. Amen. So we like, okay, David's getting a little, I see this cat sneaking up on David. So he killed that guy. But after that, once you see something, you say something. I had to put that out there. <laughs> but Abishag seeing this and also the other uh, the soldiers, you know, we military. So we like, listen, listen, big man. Bruh, we know you in charge. Bruh, we know you the leader here. All due respect. With all due respect. Listen, we we want you to swear right now. We swear to you, you ain't going out no more, man. Amen. We're going to bring the victory home to you, but you go no more out there, man. You know, and that we had to be that guy to understand that. I say, okay, man, y'all, you know, handle that. You know, I taught y'all well. I've been watching y'all fight. I know y'all can handle yourself, you know, and I don't want to be the cause of the downfall. Cause he said, look, he said the light will go out in Israel, David. If you get killed right now, if one of them chumps sneak you, that's listen. If you out there and you doing something that you ain't supposed to be doing, and some old blood or some crip or something catch you, catch you out there, and next thing you know, yo, you know what I did to that Israelite. Huh? You see how I put my working on that Israelite? And you all over, world star and all of that. No, you make all Israel look pretty bad. bad. So, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You gonna take the light out. Yo, them, them Israelites ain't all that, yo. Huh? Shoot, little man did a wop, wop, bang. And that, world, you should, world star. World star, yeah. All you see was that Israelite tilt to the side. Boom. And you don't want that. So, so he said, listen, man, you, you're missing a step now. You ain't what you used to be. So fall back, man, before you give Israel a bad name. You're going to take the light out. We don't want that, you know, for you or for us. Amen. Come she. 18. And it came to pass after this, that there was again war with the Philistines at Go. Then Sibachai, the Hushathite, slew Saph, who was one of the sons of the giants. And there was war again with the Philistines at Go. And Elkanah, the son of Yaare Orim, of Beit Lechem, slew Goliath the Gittite, the staff whose, whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a champion who had on every hand six fingers mm -hmm. and on every foot six toes, four and 20 in number. <laughs> and he was also born to the giant. And when he taunted Yisrael, Yehonatan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of Dawid and by the hand of his servants. Okay, these is four more giants, four more Goliath-type dudes that Israel's was taking out. You know, but um, 
and and you see David's nephew was fighting now, Yohanatan, the son of his brother Shimeon. So you out there fighting with your nephews and all. It's how, you know, fall back, but Israel's still winning. <laughs> Come she. 22. Okay. Chapter 22, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thou we spoke unto Yehoah the words of this song in the day that Yehoah delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Shaul. And he said, Yehoah is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. The God who is my rock, in whom I, in him I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Hallelujah. Listen, now this is what we got to do. In these times, when you see these things happen, when you see Israel strong, when you see them youths teaching like that, Amen. when you see these things going on, you got to talk with God. You got to talk Amen. with yourself. You say, listen, it's saying David spake unto Yehoah. So Yehoah, this is of you. You are a rock. Can you go to um, Psalms 18, verse 1? It's going to be some flipping on this, on this chapter here. Psalms 18, verse 1. Okay, let me read 1 and 2. For the leader, a psalm of Dawid, the servant of Yehoah, who spoke unto Yehoah the words of this song in the day that Yehoah delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Shaul. And he said, I love thee, O Yehoah, my strength. Yehoah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my rock, in him I take refuge, my shield and, the horn, and my horn of my salvation, my high tower. The most high, we have to remember, I'm going to say this a hundred times, we got to remember where our strength comes from, people. Amen. We got to remember that these things, this comes from the most high. Come see. Back. 22K. Yeah. Verse 4. Praise thy cries, Yehoah, and I am saved from mine enemies, for the ways of death come past me. The floods of Bileal assail me. The cords of Shaul surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon Yehoah. Yea, I called upon my God, and out of his temple he heard my voice, and my cry did enter into his ears. Back to 18, 3, three through 6. He said, I will call on, on Yehoah. Uh, three through six? Yeah. Okay. Praise thy Christ is Yehoah. Wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. Yehoah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in him shall I take refuge. Eighteen? Hmm? You said eighteen, right? Eighteen, three. 18, yeah. Psalms eighteen, that, verse three. That's three. I will call upon that. Go ahead, read it again. Read yours. Nah, yeah, that, okay. Yehoah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My rock, my rock, in him I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Praise thy cry is Yehoah. And I, and I am saved from mine enemies. The cords of death can pass me, and the floods of Bilia I'll assail me. The cords of Sheol, uh, Sha, uh, Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. Uh, it says, I will call upon Yehoah, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods un of ungodly men made me afraid. Sometimes we be afraid of those who are, are not serving the most high like us. Sometimes we, we in doubt of ourselves. That's when we have to really go to the most high, to the creator. You know, we have to pray, praise his name and we have to give thanks. And, and once we, we get that, that feeling back with the creator, then we know that, that these people can't do us nothing. Then you know that the ungodly that, that you was afraid of for a minute can't do anything to you. Sometimes it be on your job, it be your boss, it be a, a cold somebody where you be like, wow, man, I'm messing around, lose my job. But once you... Once you get your faith in the Most High and do your work too, you gotta do what you're supposed to do. Once, once you you know understand things, then then we are we better in touch with the Most High. But sometimes we we lose that 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 feeling, and it's usually within ourselves. So we have to do this cry out. Come see. Twenty-two. Wait. Oh, got it. Twenty-two. My bad. Mm -hmm. Eight. The earth did shake and quake. The foundation of heaven did tremble. They were shaken because he was wroth. Smoke arose in his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth did devour. Coals flamed forth from him, 
he bowed the heavens also and came down. And thick darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, gathering of waters, thick, thick clouds and skies. Mm -hmm. And the brightness before him, coals of fly, uh, fire flamed forth. Jehovah thundered from heaven, and the Most High gave forth his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them, and the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare by the rebuke of Jehovah at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from on high, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from mine enemies most strong, from them that hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but Jehovah was a stay unto me. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighteth in me. Jehovah rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands have he recompensed me. All right, and again, once we get into situations, the most high if, if, in our godliness if we are being in our godly stage and we're doing these things that we're gonna as we're supposed to do the most high will send he will he will come he will save us out of these things and like i always say he's not gonna leave any question of who did this amen he's not gonna let you be thinking oh well my might got this and i did that he's gonna show it in such a way that we said he came he showed his lights and all, all kind of stuff you're gonna see so much stuff you're gonna say this can only happen to father amen the most high is the only one that could deliver me from from this judge the only one that could deliver me from this this situation that i was in that i got myself in and then you're gonna get the praise because he's gonna show you all these signs he showed david to make you say this is me he said and your whole reward me according to my righteousness but we got to put the righteousness in. Even when things look bleak and things look gloom, we got to stay on our righteousness. Like I said last time, I mean, sometimes you, you be down and out and you might see something that you think is your reward, but it's your setup. You know, your cell phone again is $300. And you just see that there and you know that that's, that's not your 300 and you, you see the setup. But sometimes we have to keep our righteousness because the test is always there. As we always say, you never stop getting tested. Come she. 22. For I have kept the ways of Yehoah and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his ordinance were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was as a single heart, I was, and I was single hearted toward him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore have Yehoah recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness, according to my cleanness in his eyes. Again, according to the righteousness, he says, he says, for I have kept the ways of Yehoah and have not and have not wickedly departed from my God. And sometimes when things is down, we have a tendency to try to do things our way and use that term that so many use, the Most High understands. When the Most High is just testing you to see if you're going to stay on course. He says, for all his judgments were before me, and as for his statues, I did not depart from them. Amen. This book is ever before us. And as long as we keep this near to us and we stay in this daily, we, we will not depart. You're going to be a better person. You're going to beat that test every time. But if you say, okay, I ain't got to read this week. I, I read that. I don't, I don't see this, this Genesis thing a hundred times. You know, we go through this whole Genesis every year. And I've been doing this 40 years. Y'all think I don't know what happened with Jacob and Leah? Well, I got to read that. Right. And that's how we fool ourselves. Amen. But we, we learned a long time ago. Every time you open this book, year after year, if we go from Genesis to Deuteronomy, you learn something new. Something new that, that the Most High opens your mind up to because you can't get everything at one time. That will blow your mind. So little by little, as you come into this way, the Most High gives you a little bit, just enough to keep you, to grasp you. When you first come in, you just be so, you be like, wow. Wow, I'm those people? You know what I mean? It's like one of them novels you can't put down when you first come in, but then as time passes, it be that one you can't pick up. Pick up everything, but I done seen that. Come on, I done seen that part. I can do that with my eyes closed. 
And that's where you fumble at. That's when you start to fall off because you ain't, you ain't doing the repetition no more. You're trying to do things from memory. And as you get older, your memory is shot. Come see. 26. With the merciful, thou dost show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou dost show thyself upright. With the pure, thou dost show thyself pure. And with the crooked, thou dost show thyself subtle. And the afflicted people thou dost save. But thine eyes are upon the haughty, and that, that thou mayest humble them. For thou art my lamp, O Yehoah, and Yehoah doth light in my darkness. All right. Now you got to know what person you are. Amen. You got to be honest with yourself. Because you can't be looking for something from the Most High that you ain't putting out. He said, with the pure, he'll show himself pure. You can't be looking for pureness and you filthy person. That ain't true. Amen. That's not you. So Amen. you got to be honest with yourself. With the humble, he will show himself humble. But he said, also it says, <clears throat> he said, with the pure, will I show myself pure, thyself pure. And with the froward, Thou will, thou will show thyself unsavory. Now, if you want to be that forward person, it's going to show unsavoriness. He said, and the afflicted people thou will save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. Amen. When, when you start getting haughty, when we get full of ourselves, when we at a place right now where nobody can't tell me nothing and... How can I listen to you? I'm up here, you down there. You know, when you get to that place and the only person you listening to is you, that's when your problems start coming. Right. Come see. Because when you're up there, the only place you can go is down. That's what he said. I'm going to bring you down. Come see. 30. For by thee I run upon a truth. By my God do I scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. Uh -huh. The word of Yehoah is tried. He is a shield to all of them that take refuge in him. For who is God save Yehoah? And who is a rock save our God? Who is God but God? We know not no other. We know about nobody else. There is no second in command. There is no, no, no secretary, no middle person. It says, who is God but God? Amen. And once we know of this God, this great God, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. We know that the Father's way is perfect. We know that the Most High don't make no mistakes. Amen. But we also know that we are not perfect and we do make mistakes. So once we realize that and be able to accept the point that we're not, we not perfect. You know what I mean? You can't look and say, oh, man, um. Well, look at that prince, man. You see that mistake prince made? I'm going to make mistakes. Right now, somebody might come up here and, and say something. You know, I mean, we live. <laughs> Can't take it back. We live. This is live. <laughs> we ain't watching no tape. <laughs> but they got to know also, oh, prince ain't perfect. He didn't mean to say that. He slipped up. You know, he thought he was playing dominoes when he cursed like that. <laughs> But you know, he was you, too quick to move. Yeah, I was too quick to, to make that move, and I can't pull that back. Amen. Uh, yeah, it's the emotions, but as well as I know I'm not perfect, y'all have to know I'm not perfect and know that y'all are not perfect. You say he gonna make mistakes. You know, just make sure that those, you know, we can correct. <laughs> but because some mistakes is, is irreversible. You'd be like, nah, Prince teaching this week, I mean, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> I heard enough there. I've gone somewhere else. And that's because I done made some mistakes that's irreversible. I, mean, I done got too, too, big, too big on this. Come see. Oh, yeah. 33. Uh -huh. The God, who is my strong fortress, and who letteth my way go forth straight, who maketh me my feet like hinds, and setteth me, upon, uh, setteth me upon my high places, who traineth my hands for war, so that my arms do bend a bow of brass. Thou has also given me thy shield of salvation, and thy condensation has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and my feet have not slipped. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Neither did I turn back till they were consumed. And I have consumed them and smitten them through that they cannot rise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. This is when you get your strength. This is when you get your power. When you start make, admitting that the, this stuff comes from God. 
this ain't of me, but I'm gonna stay in my righteousness and that's, that's gonna kill all of them fears I have because when we do those things that are not right, it kind of make your knees wobbly and you know I ain't been on a good on a good path with Most Higher. So you know I don't even know if He got my back. But when you on that good path, when you on that road, you you know He said Father got my back on this. The Father gonna do you know He gonna hold me up. He gonna you know He teach my feet to walk. I'm good. Come see, brother. Forty. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Thou hast made mine enemies turn their backs unto me. Yea, them that hate me that I might cut them off. They looked, but there was none to save. Even unto Yehoah, but he answered them not. Then I beat them small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire in the streets and did tread them down. He said, look, they looked, but there was no one to help them. And even to Yehoah, but he was not there. You know, even your enemies, even those who, who don't do, do God's law, when they get in, into a situation, oh God. Right. Oh God. Right. Huh? They had first thing, oh God, help me out of this. Huh? You got all these people. You got the atheists. That's what they call them. Atheists, yes, atheists. sir. Atheists. You, know, you got them that don't believe in God at all. Go to the hospital. You get that. C you got the C word. Oh my God. Oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they hit you with the cancer thing. You know you 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 stage four. Oh my God. You know. But they when they cry on God. Say God ain't there to help you. You know you Amen. ain't been getting checkups. You ain't been doing the right things for yourself. You know, now you want to cry to me. Most I ain't always going to be there. But we might, we must find him in the time when he can be found, as it said. Come, she. 44. Thou hast delivered, thou also hast delivered me from the contentions of my people. Thou hast kept me to be the head of the nations, a people whom I have not known serve me. The sons of the stranger dwindle away before me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The sons of the stranger fade away and come halting out of their close places. Yehoah liveth, and blessed be my rock, Hallelujah. and exalted be the God, my, the rock of my salvation, Hallelujah. even the God that executed vengeance for me, and bringeth down people under me, and bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest, liftest me up above them that rise up against me. Thou deliverest me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Yehoah, among the nations, and I will sing praise to thy holy name. A tower of salvation is he to his king, and show of mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And again, this whole thing is like, this is King David, a mighty man, a man of strength, a man of war, a man that, that killed so many. You know, you ask him for a hundred or something, he bring you back two hundred. Just to show good faith. <laughs> good faith, huh? Good faith? <laughs> a little extra there. It's a little something else. Since you went to this, here's a hundred more. Mess knock with that. Out. Knock yourself out. Yeah, hey, knock yourself out, dear fella. You know what I mean? But this is a man of war. This is a warrior. Uh, as my teacher used to say, a guy who can kill a brick and put iron in the hospital. But <laughs> at the same time, he knew all of this came from God. Amen. He never started taking this to himself. He never got big headed. And it's like, come on, man. I did this. Who built this up? Me. That's who. That's who who took this from Shaul? Me. That's who. Who I trust? Me. That's who. He, he never went with that approach. I've seen he it. He always too. humbled himself and went to the Most High and thanked him. And with that, we should all thank God for this day and all the days He has given us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You want me to sing a song? Yes. You ain't got a poem? Nah. I'm, out of my, I'm out of my league. Yeah. You ain't got no poem? <laughs>